Well, you may recall that in our previous session, we got to know about the positioning of this class 10 chapter on forest and wildlife resources in India. This is from geography component of social sciences. We were also made aware about the backward and forward linkages of this chapter. You were also acquainted with learning outcomes and competencies to be developed through this chapter. In the later part of the discussion, we had learned few concepts like resources, conservation, habitat, ecology, biosphere and ecological system etc. We had also learned about the concept of biodiversity and characteristics of biodiversity in India. You may still further recall that through activity, we have arrived at reasons for vivid biodiversity in India. Students, can somebody reiterate the reasons for rich and varied biodiversity in India? Yes, this is because of large size of our country. You know, India is the seventh largest country in area with the area of 3.27 lakh square kilometer. It's north south and east west extension is around 3000 kilometers. From south to north, it is spread from tropical to temperate region due to its diversity in physiography, climatic condition and soil. We have wide varieties of plants and animal species in our country. Our country has rich heritage of biodiversity. We can collect that forests and wildlife are very important resources. They fall under the category of biotic, renewable and national resource. You may wonder that if the renewable and biotic in nature, then why we need to conserve them? Will any of you like to answer? Yes, it is true that they are biotic in nature and renewable. Still, there is threat to these resources because trees in forest take time to get mature and if the rate of cutting forest is more than that of planting trees, then this may lead to serious concern and we may face loss of forest cover. Similarly, if reproductive mechanism of some of the animal species is not so active and functional, then the ruthless killing of animals with high rate may lead to their threat of extinction from the earth. Collecting notes from the previous session, let us make attempt to learn further in this direction. Today, the focus of our discussion will be on four major aspects related to this chapter. This will include status of forest in India, followed by types and distribution of forest. Thereafter, we will be discussing on threats to forest. And finally, we will be discussing on classification of plants and animal species given by IUCN. Now, to begin with, let us examine the status of forest in our country. We may like to draw your attention to the table displayed on your screen. What does the table represent? It shows different classes of forest such as dense, moderately dense, open forest and scrubs along with their corresponding area in square kilometer and percentage of total geographical area that each class occupies. From the given data, can you note down the total geographical area covered by forest in India in the year 2019? What is the proportion of forest cover to total geographical area? Yes. The forest cover in India is spread over an area of 7,12,249 square kilometers, which accounts for 21.67% of the total geographical area. Now we may like to draw your attention to another visual where you can observe the share of different classes of forest in the year 2019. Here you may have a question in your mind that what are these classes of forest? You may note that these are very dense, moderately dense, open forest and scrubs. You may further note that the proportion of dense forest in India is less, whereas moderately dense forest and scrubs have almost equal share of around 
10% of the total forest area. Students, some of you may like to know the clear cut distinction among these classes of forest. For this, you need to make a closer observation of the visual. Do try to visualize the appearance of these classes, though the distinction can also be understood from the words itself like very dense and moderately dense. Yet, let us try to observe the density of trees and the canopy of trees from these images and draw meaningful conclusions. We can reflect by saying in very dense forest, the canopy is very thick. Sunlight does not penetrate to the ground, whereas in moderately dense forest canopy is not so thick and trees density is also less. Then we have scrub as another class. Scrub is a type of vegetation associated with poor soils in the semi-arid environment in which plant growth is stunted or specially adapted to seasonal drought learners. You may be wondering that how data related to forest cover is collected. Well, in your previous class, you may have learned about census to count people in our country. But when it comes to data related to forest cover in India, we have organization called Forest Survey of India, located at Dehradun, capital of Uttarakhand. This Forest Survey of India comes under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. This organization brings out data related to forest cover in India after every two years. Now, let us mark the city of Dehradun on an outline map of India, wherein the Forest Survey of India is located. Students, this Forest Survey of India also works for mapping of forest cover and share information on forest resources with us through published reports. Hope you all are clear about the source of data related to forest cover in India. Yes, as an extended activity, as an extended learning, you may visit their website www.fsi.nic.in and gather, gather several resources material for your project work. Now, in order to understand the status of forest cover in India, let us observe the given bar graph. Students, what does the bar graph represent? Yes, the bar graph represents trend of forest cover in India from 1987 to 2019. And what does x and y coordinate represent in this bar graph? Yes, x coordinate represent years, whereas y coordinate represent percentage of forest cover to total geographical area of our country. What was the share of forest cover to the total geographical area in the year 1987? It was 19.49%. And what was the share of forest cover to total geographical area in the year 2019? It was 21.67%. Now, if somebody asks you, what is the trend of forest cover in India from 1987 to 2019? Then what will be your response? You may agree that the 32 year long journey witnessed the rise of little over 2% of forest cover despite an increase in the population of the country, rapid urbanization and tremendous pressure on resources like forests. The forest cover reduced from 1987 to 1999 and then there is a slight increase in forest cover thereafter. We conclude that India's forest cover had a roller coaster journey. You may note down your arguments in this regard. Now, in order to learn the pressure of population of forest resources, let us observe another bar graph. Students, 
what does this bar graph represents? The bar graph represents absolute growth of population from 1901 to 2021. I may like to draw your attention to the red bar. What does the red bar represent? Red bar represent estimated population in 2021. Why it is estimated? Yes, because census for 2021 is yet to be conducted and we had last census in the year 2011. That is why the red bar represents the estimated population of 2021. Can you relate two bar graphs and infer findings? Yes, you may infer that the total geographical area under forest ranges from 19 to 22 percent in the last 32 years. The absolute number of people in India is increasing at enormous rate. What is your opinion whether the area under forest is less or more as compared to the total population of our country? It is less because as per requirement we must have 33 percent area under forest cover. National Forest Policy of India which came in the year 1988 envisaged a goal of achieving 33 percent of geographical area of the country under forest cover and tree cover. So, what must be done to meet the target of 33 percent of forest cover in our country? Answer is simple. Discourage deforestation and promote afforestation and reforestation. In the graph, you will also notice that this apparent growth in forest cover after 1999. What is the possible reason for apparent growth of forest cover after 1999? This may be due to plantation by different agencies. The forest report does not distinguish between natural forest and plantations. Now, you all find out the status of forest cover in your state or UT and express whether the figures are more or less than the national average. There is one response recorded by the student from Meghalaya. She says her state has 76.33 percent area covered by forest and it is more than the national average. Students, let us discuss some of the issues and concerns related to forest resources. Deforestation is the major concern for forest resources. Deforestation is the permanent removal of trees. Large scale development such as river valley project also lead to submergence of forest under water. Grazing and fuel wood collection, shifting cultivation in tribal belts, Natural disasters like floods and forest fire are also major concern for loss of forest. You can relate how shifting cultivation, mining and forest fire are threat to forest by reading this newspaper clipping from the state of Nagaland. We can note that though at the national level figures related to percentage of forest cover are not changing much, but at the state level these figures are changing rapidly due to the rapid loss of forest cover. Now let us discuss types of forest and distribution of forests in India. We know that forests need to be managed, controlled and regulated. You know. Who controls them? They are controlled by the government. Forest area is recorded as forest in the government records. Often this term is also written as recorded forest area. The recorded forest area is categorized into reserve forest, protected forest and 
unclassed forest. When it comes to reserve forest, it is an area notified under the provision of India Forest Act or the State Forest Act having full degree of protection. In reserve forest, all the activities are prohibited unless permitted. When it comes to reserve forest, it is an area notified under the provision of India Forest Act or the State Forest Act having full degree of protection. In reserve forest, all activities are prohibited unless permitted. When it comes to protected forest, it is an area notified under the provision of India Forest Act or the State Forest Act having limited degree of protection. In protected forest, all activities are permitted unless prohibited. And when it comes to unclassed forest, it is an area recorded as forest but not included in reserve or protected forest category. Ownership status of such forest varies from state to state. Now, let us discuss state-wise distribution of forest in India. For this, let us observe the given map of forest cover in India. The state with largest forest cover in India are Madhya Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Maharashtra. When it comes to forest cover as percentage of total geographical area, then the decreasing order of states will be Mizoram 85.41%, Arunachal 79.63%, Meghalaya 76.33%, Manipur 75.46% and Nagaland 75.31%. Students, you can also mark the states where the forest cover is not so much. You can mark these states on the outline map of India. Now, let us try to learn about classification of plants and animal species as specified by International Union for Conservation of Nature, which is abbreviated as IUCN. Let us find out what does IUCN stands for. IUCN is a membership union composed of both government and civil society organization. It harnesses the experience, resources and reaches of its more than 1400 member organization and the input of more than 15,000 experts. This diversity and vast expertise makes IUCN the global authority on the status of the natural world and the measures needed to safeguard. The motto of IUCN is United for Life and Livelihoods and they focus on nature, conservation and biodiversity. IUCN has its headquarters in Glan in Switzerland. You may mark Switzerland on an outlined map of the world and continent of Europe. Students, you may recall that Switzerland is a central European country and it is home to the Alps mountains. The IUCN Red List of Threatened Species is the world's most comprehensive inventory of the global conservation status of plant and animal species. The Red List alarms that more than 31,000 species are threatened with extinction that is 27% of all assessed species. IUCN uses a set of quantitative criteria to evaluate the extinction of risk of species. These criteria are relevant to most species and all regions of the world. The IUCN red list categorizes, define the extinction risk of species assessed. The upper figure on the screen highlights nine categories which extend from non-evaluated to extinct, critically endangered and vulnerable species are considered to be threatened with extinction. Out of these nine categories, 
middle 5 require immediate attention as specified in the lower figure which appears on your screen. You may see some of the examples from endangered species from mammals like Javan rhinosaurs, Malabar civet and Namdafa flying squirrel. Namdafa is a biodiversity park in Changlang district of Arunachal Pradesh. You can also see endangered birds like forest owlet, Indian vulture and Siberian crane. Further, you may be able to see endangered reptiles also that include Bengal red turtle, ghadial and river terrapin. Students, you will also notice that some of the fishes are also endangered. This may include narrow tooth sawfish, pondicherry shark and gangetic shark. They also fall under this category of endangered species. For your grade level, it is necessary to learn few concepts in this regard. Let us learn more about normal species, endangered species, vulnerable species, rare species, endemic and extinct species. So let's discuss these one after the other. When it comes to normal species, they are the ones whose population levels are considered to be normal for their survival such as cattle, sal, pines and rodents. There is no threat to their survival. Then there are endangered species. Here, let us look at the word endanger. In this, a prefix en or n is added to the word danger, which means within danger. In such case, endangered species are those species of organisms which are at risk of becoming extinct because it is either few in numbers or threatened by changing environment or predation parameters. Also, it could mean that to, due to deforestation, there may be lack of food or water. It is therefore considered to be facing a very high risk of extinction in the wild. You may recall black buck, crocodile, Indian rhino, loin-tailed macaw, sangai deer and Indian wild ass are some other endangered species in India. Then we have vulnerable species. The word vulnerable means exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed either physically or emotionally. They need additional support, care, protection due to their neglect or risk. Thus, vulnerable species is a species which has been categorized by the IUCN as likely to become endangered under the circumstances. It is therefore considered to be facing a high risk of extinction in the wild. In India, blue sheep, Asiatic elephant and gangetic dolphin are examples of vulnerable species. Children, what does the word rare mean? Yes, rare means unusual, uncommon, out of the ordinary and thus it has value and we give importance. Thus we have rare species with small population. The examples of rare species can be the Himalayan brown bear, wild Asiatic buffalo, desert fox and hornbill. You may observe that hornbill is a beautiful bird. It has special place in Naga culture. Students, now let us come to the term endemic. Endemic species are those which are only found in some particular areas, usually isolated by natural or geographical barriers. For example, there is Andamanese steel, Nicobaris pigeon, Andamanese wild pig and Mithun in Arunachal Pradesh. Now there is one more category called extinct. Extinct means not existing from a very long time. A species become extinct 
when the last existing member of that species dies. Extinction therefore becomes a certainly when there are no surviving individuals that are able to reproduce and create a new generation. There are several reasons for extinction of animals. These reasons for extinction are either natural or anthropogenic. It may be due to lack of adaptation, climate change, loss of habitat, invasion by other alien species, overexploitation, tourism and encroachment. Example of such species are the Asiatic cheetah and pink head duck. Students, we hope you must have enjoyed learning today's session. Do gather more information on these endangered and extinct species. Next time again we will continue with this theme and will talk about conservation strategies for forest and wildlife in India. Till then, thank you and goodbye.